right here I have an ISO of Ubuntu that I downloaded and I've installed VirtualBox. So I'm going to go ahead and open up VirtualBox and select New. I'll need a name for my installation, so since this is just going to be an Ubuntu machine, I'm just going to name it that. If you don't name it Ubuntu, it's not going to go ahead and select Ubuntu here. It might select something else, or you'll have to manually go in here and select uh, what your installation is. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. And here is where you allocate how much memory you want. I'm going to leave it at the default and hit Next. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to leave it at create a virtual hard disk now. So let's go ahead and hit create. I leave this at VDI and hit next. And here's where you can select whether or not you want a dynamically allocated hard disk or a fixed size. So the advantage of a dynamically allocated disk is that as your needs increase for your virtual disk, you can it will expand according to your usage. If you do a fixed size, you can't increase it, but it will be much faster to use. I've always used dynamically allocated as my needs change over time, so I'm going to leave it at that and hit next. I'm going to give it 10 gigs just to start out with and hit create. So now that we have the settings down, we're going to actually need to connect this ISO to the Ubuntu machine that we've created. There's actually no operating system on this right now. So make sure this Ubuntu is highlighted in blue and click start. This will power up the machine for the first time. The first time you start it up, it's going to ask you where your startup disk is. And this is referring to that ISO on my desktop. So we're going to find that. I'm going to click add. Navigate over to my desktop and click the Ubuntu ISO. I'm going to make sure it's selected and hit choose. And now I'm going to hit start. This will boot the machine with the ISO in a virtual disk. Keep in mind that it's not actually installed right now and we'll have to install it in a future step. We've booted into the Ubuntu disk, and now let's install it. I'm going to click Install Ubuntu. I'm going to select the US keyboard layout, select whatever you're used to using, and hit Continue. I like to have the normal installation, that way I have the utilities I need, and the games and whatever, all right there, ready to go. I also like to download updates while installing Ubuntu, it's just faster that way. And Lastly, I actually like to install the third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi. That way I have my Wi-Fi working and ready to go when I boot. After I've selected everything I want, I hit continue. Depending on how much RAM you've given this virtual machine, this can take quite a while. So when you go to start your installation, it will say that it hasn't detected any operating systems and will ask you what it wants to do. You'll just Go ahead and erase the disk and install Ubuntu. So click Install Now. It will ask if you want to write the changes to disk. Select Continue. It'll ask where you live for the time zone. Just I'm going to go ahead and just select Continue. So you can go ahead and fill this form out with whatever you want. I'm just going to put my first name in. And the computer name is fine. If you want to do something fun, you can put something fun and choose a password to log in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That sounds good. Please choose something more secure than this. And hit continue and it will start installing. So now that installation is complete, we're going to restart the machine. So here is where we actually remove the ISO. So basically a virtual disk is in the drive in the Ubuntu machine and we want to remove that so it can boot off the installation and not the virtual disk. So go on over to optical drives and make sure that your ISO is selected and go down to remove disk from virtual drive and click it and force unmount. That will remove the disk from the drive. 
So now we're going to be booting off the actual installation. Go ahead and log in. And now you're all ready to use your machine. You can go ahead and expand the window and just use it like you would use a normal Ubuntu machine. If you want to make things a little bit easier, you can go ahead and click Devices and insert the Guest Editions CD drive. So what that will do will give you a little bit more functionality with your Ubuntu installation. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you'd like more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe.